Hey everybody, quick update. This day 10 of me having a concussion. Woke up this morning with a headache, so it's still going, but it is improving day by day. Yesterday when I woke up, I didn't have one. Uh, I hear that it's about two weeks to a month to completely heal. So I'm hoping that it doesn't take me a month before I can skate again, but this is life and every time we skate, we roll the dice. So I wanted to make a video about one of the mistakes that I see beginners make all the time that's impeding their process or their progress as skaters. And I might turn this into a series called Rookie Mistakes. Let me know down in the comments if that's something you guys are interested in. The mistake I'm talking about today is people not bending their knees, not squatting, not getting enough leverage to help them pop higher or to help them balance and slide or grind longer when they're skating. Now, one thing that I do with a lot of my students when I see them forgetting to squat down while trying ollies, or one of the early exercises that I have people do to catch their balance, which is rolling down a few steps on their board. Now, I usually have them push from about five or six feet back, look at their feet so they can step up onto the board and stand nice and wide, and then squat down. And every step that they descend, I want them to squat down a bit lower. And this is something that I often notice my students have issues with. The same goes for ollies. When people come to me and ask, how do I get a higher ollie? How do I get a higher kickflip, this trick or that trick? Typically what I see is that when they're trying the trick, they might have perfect form in every other way, but they have a very truncated squat. They're bending their knees to 120 degree angle or something like that. So their knees hardly bend at all. And what that means is they're not getting enough leverage to create the power necessary to pop, right? You, the, the analogy that I use for popping is if you've ever used a bottle opener and you've tried to have your hand all the way at the tip of the bottle opener, what happens is once there's some resistance from the bottle you're trying to open, your grip is broken and your hand slips off of the back. So what's necessary is for you to, to borrow from baseball, to choke up on the bottle opener, right? To move your hand closer to the bottle and further up the shaft of the bottle opener so that you can get a better grip and so that you can utilize leverage and you can take the amount of force that's necessary to get the cap off. It's the same thing that baseball players do sometimes. They'll choke up on the back giving them a bit more leverage and making the hits easier with certain applications. Well, for skateboarding, this is pretty much always necessary. Unless you're skating curves, which are very low and don't require much pop at all. However, in the beginning, I recommend for people to be squatting down as much as possible, even when they skate a curve, because we don't want to create bad habits for later when we're trying to pop higher especially when you're sliding. You might not need to pop high to get onto what you're sliding, but if you're trying to slide longer and longer, some of you guys watched my video about holding your slides longer, and I recommend that you start pretty low down, but you give yourself enough room to, to squat lower so that as you slide further and further, you're able to bend your knees further and further down so that you have more leverage. And this will also make it very easy when you want to dismount because the easiest way to dismount from a long slide and sometimes from a grind is to simply stand up a bit and then shift your weight away from the ledge or whatever it is you're skating. So I want you guys to do this. This is an exercise that I often recommend for people that are having trouble squatting so that they can kind of internalize that they need to be mindful of whether or not they're crouching enough before each trick. I want you to go out, and this is for the people who already know how to ollie, or if you're even learning how to ollie, I want you to stand on your board, do this on the grass, don't try to do it on the concrete because you might fall, and then when you're standing taller, it's more dangerous to take a fall, right? When you're squatting lower, you're closer to the ground, so your fall's not gonna have the same impact. And you might think it doesn't make a big difference, but oh, let me tell you, it does. And so I want you guys to go stand on your board on grass or on some foam at a playground, something like that. And I want you to try to ollie, but no, without bending your knees. Don't bend your knees at all and ollie. You can't, it's impossible. 
And you guys that think that you're doing it, you're not. You're still bending your knees a bit. You need to pay a little bit more attention to your body and work on that mind-muscle connection. When you do that, you'll see that you're not bending your knees. So now what I want you to do is I want you to go through different ranges of motion with your ollie. So I want you to start off not bending your knees at all, right? You're about here. And then I want you to bend your knees a little bit and ollie. And a little bit more and ollie. And a little bit more. All the way until your knees, your, your that knee joint creates like a 90 degree angle. And when you get to this angle, I want you to focus on as you come up to pop, I don't want you to completely extend your leg because that's another issue that a lot of people have, specifically beginners, but I'll get to that in another video. For the purpose of this video, we're only focusing on the squat. Now, assuming that your technique is proper, you should have noticed that you're able to have a much more stable ollie a much more, and a much more powerful ollie when your knees come to that 90 degree angle. And anybody who's capable of getting into a squat that's further than 90 degrees, they're going to have an even better time popping. And that's going to come into play later on when you're popping high, like when you're trying to ollie upstairs. I've only made it up a seven stair, but I can clear the seven stair as far as height goes. The problem is my squat isn't deep enough to facilitate me rolling away from that. So when I land on the top of a seven stair, I'm starting to lean instead of just being in a squat because my legs can't accommodate enough of the squat. So if I had more flexibility in my squat, I could probably make it up an eight stair. Now I've tried to gain more flexibility, but I think this is just my physical limit as far as my squat is concerned. And that's gonna have a big, that's gonna play a, a, a large role in how high you're able to ollie, how high up things you're able to ollie, it's your squat. So if you work on that squat now, it's gonna only help you in your skating later on. And this is also gonna go for your kick flips, for your heel flips, for your 180 tricks. The better you are at squatting before you pop and squatting when, you're land, when you land, the better the experience you're gonna have with skating in general. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's what I wanted to go over. I wanted you guys to I wanted to share with you guys one of the things that made a big difference in my skating because I was victim to the same thing earlier on in my skating. I didn't squat enough. And once I kind of realized how necessary it was, it changed the game for me. So I want you guys to do this. I want you to go, if you guys have a local skate park or if you have a local group of people who you skate with, assuming you're not the best one out of the group, and if you are the best one, just find the next down from you. And I want you to watch these people skate. And, you know, it's, it's, it's okay that you are, you know, we're not trying to shame anyone for the level of skating, but what I want you to do is, because I do this, when I go around, I look at the way that people use their bodies. And I can typically tell with pretty good accuracy who's the better skater by the way they're using their body and their kinetic chain, even before I've seen everyone skate very much. So I want you guys to go when you're at your local skate park and just observe for a moment and take a look at the people who skate the best and the people who skate the worst and take a look at how much movement you see as far as their squat goes, as far as them using their arms for balance, as far as when they bend their knees, are they bending their back forward too much as well? or are they keeping their back relatively straight? Because all of these things play into how well someone skates. A good person for you guys to go watch is Paul Rodriguez, because as far as I'm concerned, him, Nigel Houston as well, they have the best utilization of their kinetic chain for skating. And Paul Rodriguez even has a thing where as he crouches down, he brings his arms in front of him and down to a little bit of a cross, and then he throws his arms up as he's popping. And what that is, any of you guys who's ever run, and if you've ever run track and learned how to run properly, you know that your arms are almost as important as your legs when it comes to running properly. And having that proper form means that you're utilizing your body properly and you're moving only where necessary. So people like Paul Rodriguez and Nigel Houston, also Yuto Horogome, uh, I forget his name, but the new guy who just got on zero, they utilize their kinetic chain very effectively. 
and I'm not sure that they're conscious of doing this. I would imagine that guys like Nija and guys like Yuto are very conscious of this because they're doing it at an Olympic level and they're doing very massive tricks that have very, very close, tight tolerances for your movement is gonna dictate whether you roll away or whether you really eat it. And so it's very important at the level that they're skating that you're mindful of all of these things. So I would imagine that they have people that are coaching them in that regard. So I want you guys to watch the skaters around you. I want you guys to go and watch people's video parts. Uh, and I want you to look at their movements because if you control your body, you control your board. That's something I always share with my students. If you control your body, you control your board. I want all of you guys to get past that notion. You know, sometimes when people ask me, how come they, they want help with the trick? And the first thing they'll ask me is, why does my board do this when I'm trying this trick? And you have to get over the thought that your board is doing this. Your board doesn't do anything. It is for all intents and purposes an inanimate object. It requires energy to be put into it. It requires stimuli, which you are giving your board. So anything that your board is doing is the result of something that you are doing. So you have to internalize this. I want you guys to internalize this concept that your board's not doing anything on its own. Anything that the board does is the result of something that you've done. So if you control your body, you control your board. I want you looking at your feet. I want you focused on your kinetic chain and that mind-muscle connection, as people in the fitness community would call it. Now, one caveat is transition skaters. I've noticed there are a lot of transition skaters, and specifically bowl skaters, where they're not doing a lot of uh, airs, the people that skate transition and don't do a lot of airs, and their legs are a lot straighter than people that are skating street. And what I've taken away from this, uh, from just from me observing, is that they are using their squat, but they're using that during the pumping phase, so that when they get to the top of the coping, their legs are a bit straighter because they've already used that squat to help them pump and use that burst of energy to propel them to the top of the coping. So it's a little bit different for transition skating, but it is still useful. But for all you street skaters, uh, in my opinion, this little tidbit is as good as gold. It's helped me exponentially in my skateboarding. It's helped my students. And I've even given that tip to skaters that I've seen and seen it help them. So yeah, go ahead, watch skaters, see how they're using their body. Watch Paul Rodriguez, Nigel Houston, Yuto Horigome, and I'm sorry for forgetting that guy's name, the new writer on Zero. He had an amazing video part, but he uses it that he uses his body uh, just about perfect in my opinion. That heel flip front board he did on the Hollywood 16, if you look at how wide he stood, how well he sucked up his legs, how he floated out to the rail instead of trying to pop higher than the rail, he tailored his heel flip to the downward slope of the rail and then he sucked up his knees in order to get on the rail at just the right point and he was able to use his kinetic chain to absorb the impact. That's perfect execution in my opinion of skateboarding and I'm sorry for forgetting that guy's name but I'm also concussed right now so please forgive me. That's all I got for today. Might have been a, long, a little bit long-winded. It's harder for me to collect my thoughts right now. It's a little embarrassing uh, but uh, thank you for watching and enjoy skateboarding because I know I wish that I could right now. Thank <laughs> you.